My guest today was the Chairman, Senate Committee on Environment. And my guest today won the election of March 2015 to represent the people of River Southeast Senatorial District, comprising of Kana Local Government Area, Gokana Local Government Area, Thai Local Government Area, LMA Local Government Area, and Oyibo Local Government Area. Of course, the remaining is history. You know that the appeal court has nullified that election. And I have in the studio joining us this morning, Senator Olaka Johnson Wongu. Good morning, Senator, and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, good morning. And, of course, we'll be talking to um, Senator Lakanwogu on different issues, and uh, um, you'll be responding to all of them. Perhaps the best way for us to start is let's look back to that appeal court judgment, uh, which nullified um, your election of March 2015 as a senator of the Federal Republic. Now, uh, since then, we've not had the opportunity of speaking to you. This is the first time I am interviewing you on that. Now, could you just tell us how are you taking the appeal court verdict, and how... Have you related this to your people? Well, um, Shagun, once again, good morning now to our listeners. I say good morning and a happy new year to you all. Um, when you were listing the local governments that constitute the senatorial district, I thought I should just clarify okay. or complete the list. So we have Oyibo, Eleme, Tai, Kana, Gokana, Opobunkoro. Okay, Opobunkoro, and, and that's and where we have, yes. And Andoni local governments. They are the, that's the complete list. Okay. Well, on the matter of the um, judgment of the Court of Appeal, our uh, people elected us on the 28th of March. It was a victory earned by the PDP and a mandate freely given by our people in a credible and well contested election. Unfortunately, um, even though at the Court of First Instance, which was at the tribunal, we are uh, were able to place um, evidence and respond to the allegations of the APC and my opponent as to the credibility of the election and the tribunal upheld the elections after listening to all parties and in accordance with the laws of, our, of the land. Unfortunately at the Court of Appeal in a judgment that continued to be of extremely curious dimensions the decision of the tribunal was set aside. It is a verdict that we have had to accept even though we disagree with it because it completely turned law upside down. It did not reflect what the laws of our land. The Supreme Court is very clear. There are so many verdicts of the Supreme Court we we know and we have relied on and we're very sure that we're standing on good ground. Assuming there was any other court available to us, we are sure that that judgment would have been set aside. We think that we suffered injustice, but as people who are um, sworn to be law-abiding, our people took it in good faith and have accepted that since the people gave the mandate, we should go back to the people. They will renew their mandate. It's about the people. And that judgment was not about us, it was not against us, it was against the people. So the people will come out and defend the decision they took on March the 28th. You're tuned to Civil Bears with the 93.7 Potakot and you're listening to Talk of the Town coming to you on the dial. I'm speaking to Senator Olaka Umogo. He was declared winner by INEC in the March 2015 National Assembly election. But of course, that election has been nullified by the appeal court. But while he was in the Senate, he was the chairman of the Senate Committee on Environment. And, and I would like to take you on that. Now, Senator Olaka Umogo, Within the short spell that you were appointed the Chairman of the Senate Commission on Environment, I know that appointment was done in November, um, barely a month after we had the appeal court ruling which nullified the election. Could you tell us how much did you pursue issues that affected your people, particularly Ogonis, uh, where you've had issues of environmental degradation, um, the, the slowness in the implementation of the UNEP report? How did you, within that spirit, use your position as Chairman Senate Commission on Environment um, to see to some changes in your area? Well, I, I think I'm grateful to God for the opportunity I had in the Senate and the recognition of my colleagues that the environment was my prime consideration. I got elected because the people knew that I would be committed to dealing with the issues of environment. And then my appointment as the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Environment vindicates the uh, acknowledgement that my interest was there. Upon 
appointment, um, and this happened late in the day because the Senate didn't take off mm -hmm. in time because of certain leadership issues. But upon my appointment, I had engaged with the Minister for Environment, and then um, it was clear to me that the um, UNEP report was going to feature prominently in the activities of the ministry. There was a very clear understanding that the long neglected environmental issues of Ogoni must be addressed and there was a will and an understanding that it will be addressed. And uh, so I was very sure that if we had the time and I thought I had the time, we were going to put, make this issue a problem of the past. At the same time, on the floor of the Senate and also with the leadership of the Senate, I had um, proposed and I was sponsoring bills, bills that were to deal fundamentally with the empowerment of um, Nigerians across board, but particularly I had our people in mind. Um, I had said on the floor of the Senate that my observation was our people are engineers, they are creative, they are entrepreneurial, but they never had the opportunity to exhibit they all achieve their full potentials and they, their capacity to create wealth and give themselves meaningful life. And I talked about what people consider illegal refinery. For, for instance, you will find that um, oftentimes the military will go to the communities, meet these people who are cooking crude oil and arrest them and uh, blow up or confiscate their, um, the equipment by which they are illegally refining crude into uh, petroleum products. Why we accepted that the methods they were using were not proper, we could understand their attempt to make a living for themselves. And we said, rather than just go and arrest these people, why don't we create a framework where they can do this thing, but legally? Because we don't have <laughs> the shortage of petroleum products. Nigerians, People from Ogoni, people are, and, and around the Niger Delta were doing things that even the federal government couldn't do successfully, refine petroleum, but they were just not getting the standards and the way they were doing it was dangerous to even our environment. And we said, don't chase them away, but evolve a framework, teach them how to do it well and regulate it. You mean you took those steps while you were in the Senate? Yes, yes. And some of these I said publicly on the floor of the Senate and at, um, in every forum that I had, I made it clear that we can no longer chase up. You see, it didn't make sense to me. You are going there arresting people who had no job to do, but these people were already, without exposure to uh, uh, sophisticated technology, were cooking and refining petroleum products. Now, just give them capacity empower them to do it right. Mm. They will create jobs and it will provide the products that we were importing and it will save us for 